1995, I finally screwed up enough courage to move in with my partner of three years. So, his Lower East Side apartment, Pete's, became our Lower East Side apartment. Got used to the neighborhood really fast. And the neighbors that got really, really close to me, really took a shine to me, were the Mandelbaums. They lived right across the hall from us. Mr. and Mrs. on the fifth floor. Mr. and Mrs. Mandelbaum were in their 80s, very devout, orthodox Jews. And I'd go over every once in a while, ask if they needed something done, or if I can go to the market for them. But in a very short amount of time, I became their extra special Shabbos Goy. A <laughs> little bit of an explanation. For Orthodox Jews, any work whatsoever is absolutely forbidden on the Sabbath. But if a non-Jew wants to do that work for you, then it's kosher, so to speak. So that was my role as a Shabbos Goy. I'd go over, I'd turn on their oven on the Sabbath, I'd call the elevator, I'd make some phone calls for them. Copacetic. It wasn't all one way, though. I was also a baker, so I would make them a loaf of challah every week. And in return, they'd accept all our packages and parcels for delivery to their house. Big deal without a doorman building. So we didn't have to schlep the 20 blocks to the post office every day. So this was a cool thing. But she was so nosy, that Mrs. Mandelbaum. She, I'd hear, delivery! And I'd go over, and she'd be in the hallway with my package shaking it by her ear, saying, what have we here? She was even more nosy with my relationship with Peter, she would say, so, I'm forgetting now, which one of you gets the living room and which one of you sleeps in the bedroom? And I would evade the answer and I'd go back and I'd unload on Peter and he'd howl laughing. He had this southern charm, he was from Alabama. And he'd say, bless her heart, that Mrs. Mandelbaum? Isn't she precious? Well, you just tell her the truth. You tell her you're the top, I'm the bottom and there ain't no bunk bed. <laughs> well, a few months after that, Peter gets really, really, really sick. We go to the doctor, and unfortunately, he tests positive for the HIV AIDS virus. The doctor gets his health back again, and he sends us right away for counseling. And the counseling was supposed to help us navigate challenges. It was also supposed to help us navigate safer sex, so we weren't transmitting the virus. And right from the get-go, the um, counselor started recommending that we introduce into our sex life the use of toys. The only toys I was familiar with were the ones that I bought for my nieces and nephews at holiday time. I was so vanilla. And she kept recommending one specific toy. Some background for you. My, my name is Richard Cardillo. But until the age of 14 and a little bit beyond, I was a dick. Not a, not a Rick, not a Richie, not a Ricky. Not, I was a dick. And my last name just screamed out for mockery. So all through elementary school, all through high school, I'd hear the taunting chant, here comes Dick Cardildo, here comes Dick Cardildo, and it would be relentless, and it would go on and on, and it wouldn't stop, and it goes on forever, and I just had to develop a thick skin. I know I'm telling this story to you tonight, and I know within the next few weeks, one of you are going to run into me in Tompkins Square Park or on the F train, and I'm going to hear very sotto voce, there goes Dick Cardildo. It's just, it never ends. It goes on and on. I was so hard pressed to introduce into my sex life any object whose name was going to serve as a trigger warning for all the hassles I had as a kid. But I was a trooper. I said, okay, I'll buy the damn thing, but I'm not buying it in person. Too embarrassed. I need a catalog. She gave me one of her catalogs. I went home that night and I was just more flustered than ever. And I hear, Richard, a favor, please. And a Mrs. Mandelbaum, just what I needed. I go, what is it, Mrs. Mandelbaum? It's the Sabbath and I can't use the phone. Could you call up Sears catalog for me and order that umbrella for me? Yes, Mrs. Mandelbaum. I'll do it. So I do it. Then I rush back to my apartment to do my ordering. So I'm looking through the catalog and I said, that's the one I want. It had the name Jeff Stryker emblazoned on the shaft of it. Go home and Google that name tonight and you'll get an idea of the length and girth of that thing. <laughs> Just amazing. Two weeks later, Richard, delivery. Yes, Mrs. Mandelbaum, I go over. On her front table are two oblong packages. And the one with my name and address on it is ripped open on the top. And I start freaking. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She saw it. She knows what I bought. She knows I'm a sodomite. I can't believe it. And I was so freaked. I couldn't even ask her, who the hell opened that thing? I just grabbed it, and I ran out. And she says after me, may you and Peter enjoy your new delivery. I'm like, she saw it. I know she saw it. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> 
So I get back and I start unloading on Peter. I'm just going, she saw it. She knows we're sodomites. She knows what's going on. She's got it all figured out. And he, of course, he's just howling, laughing. And he starts making jokes. He said, well, face the music, Richard. You are no longer the Shabbos Goy. You are now the Shabbos Gay. And I said, that was not funny. And he picks up the dildo and he's shaking it up in the air and he goes, and this is our new Shabbos Goy toy. And I'm like, no. And I storm to the back room and I slam the door and he goes screaming out to me, come back, little shiksa. <laughs> Needless to say, we did not use that toy that much. Just didn't get used. Uh, that was 15 years ago. In 2012, Pete died. And um, about a year after he died, I finally got my act in, uh, uh, together enough to plan a yard sale with all the crap we had amassed for 18 years of our lives together up in the country, too. So I unloaded everything. I'm getting boxes out. I opened one of the boxes, and there it is, the dildo. I can say that name now. <laughs> and I got a little wistful, and I got a little nostalgic, and I started weeping a bit. But more than anything, it made me realize how far I've come in my life, how I love the man I am now, and I don't run from my own shadow. But I couldn't sell it. I just couldn't sell it. I, cu I couldn't face hearing somebody say, so what kind of a deal can you give me on the tea cozy, the abrola, the popcorn popper, and that dildo? So I couldn't sell it. I threw it away. In recyclables, but I threw it away. I'm 58 this year. I'm back to toys for the first time in my life again. And now they're toys for my beautiful four glorious grand nieces and nephews. And I hope their curiosity makes them rip open every package and peek in all the time. Thank you. <laughs>